What's up you beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna make three of my favorite gin cocktails. I feel like I always say they're my favorite, but I guess I love them all, so it's kind of true, but let's just rephrase this a little bit to be more accurate. Today we're gonna make three fantastic gin cocktails that I love and also that I believe are slightly underrated and I believe everyone should know about them because they're just freaking delicious. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Let's be wild today and let's skip the intro. We're gonna start right away with one of the very few stirred gin cocktail that I love, if not my favorite. We're gonna make the Alaska my way. This one was first published in 1930 in Harry Craddock's Savoy Cocktail Book, but it was probably around before that. It's just one responsible for putting it on the map. It's basically a riff on a dry martini using yellow chartreuse instead of dry vermouth, so it's a sweet and herbaceous martini. Personally, I reworked the specs a little bit just to make it a little bit drier, more complex, and balanced. So for the recipe today, we're gonna need dry gin, yellow chartreuse, fino sherry, orange bitters, and suze. So we're gonna start in our mixing glass by adding two and a quarter ounces of dry gin, half an ounce of yellow chartreuse, quarter of an ounce of fino sherry, a scant bar spoon of suze, and two dashes of orange bitters. And remember, always double up the amount when using a small bitter bottle like this one. Then we're gonna stir this over ice for about 20 to 30 seconds. Strain this in a chilled cocktail coupe. Then we're gonna express a lemon zest across the top for the beautiful lemon aroma. And in this one, I like to dip the lemon zest in the cocktail for a more intense lemon flavor. And there have it, the Alaska. Cheers. Mm, I haven't had an Alaska in such a long time and really I don't know why because it is hands down my favorite stirred down gin drink, especially that version. By using a little less of yellow chartreuse, by adding a little bit of fino sherry and suze, we have something that's drier, more complex, and in my opinion, for my palate, much more balanced. The bitterness, floral notes, and earthiness from the suze really makes all the flavors from the gin pop, and the slightly acidity from the fino sherry balances the sweetness from the yellow chartreuse for an overall much more balanced cocktail, in my opinion. So that's it for the Alaska. Now let's move on to the second drink of the episode. Let's make the Barnum was right. So this 1940-ish cocktail named after a 1929 comedy film is basically a gin apricot daisy. And when I look at the specs, it really makes me think of a Peggy club, but instead of using triple sec, we're using apricot brandy. So that would be gin, apricot brandy, lemon, and Angostura bitters. So looking at these two recipes, the Peggy club and the Barnum was right. I guess that it was kind of common to use Angostura bitters with fruity, citrusy, and gin cocktails back then. And for me, it's really not like, normal or intuitive to grab some Angostura when I'm making a gin fruity sour cocktail. But in this case, more than in a Pingu Club, in my opinion, it works marvelously. So for this cocktail, again, we're gonna need some dry gin, apricot liqueur, lemon, Angostura bitters, and to make the flavors pop, a little bit of saline solution. So we're gonna start in our shaker with two ounces of dry gin, one ounce of apricot liqueur, half an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice, and we're gonna finish this recipe with a couple of dashes of Ango. Then we're gonna fill our shaker with ice and give it a good shake for about 10 to 15 seconds. Fine strain it in a beautiful chilled cocktail coupe. And for the garnish, we're gonna express a lemon zest across the top for the beautiful lemon oils. So there I have it, the barnum was right. Cheers. Mm. The first thing that we get in this drink is the apricot, but it's not very sweet. It's actually quite dry. The sweetness, yes, is balanced by the tartness from the lemon, but because we didn't use a lot of juice, it's not juicy, it's very intense in flavors. And while the flavors are fruity and refreshing, it really packs a punch in a way that we have a feeling that we're having a very stiff drink. So for this kind of flavor spectrum, I think it is a very interesting template and I really like it. So if you like intense flavors, something that really packs a punch, but also that's on the fruity side, I'm sure you're gonna love this one. So that's it for the Barnum's right. Now let's move on to the third cocktail and last drink of the day. Let's make the 1934 Casmo. 
You can tell just by its name that this cocktail predates the vodka and cranberry one. And while it never got as much attention as the famous Sex and the City cocktail, it is in my opinion much better. So what you're gonna need to make it is dry gin, triple sec, simple syrup, raspberries, and lemon juice. So first you're gonna add in your shaker enough raspberries to cover the bottom of it and then you're gonna add two ounces of gin. Next you're gonna add quarter of an ounce of triple sec, quarter of an ounce of simple syrup and three quarters of an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. You're gonna fill your shaker with ice and give it a good shake for about 10 to 15 seconds and because the raspberries are so soft there's no need to muddle them to extract the juice and flavor. The shaking process will do the trick just fine. Then you're gonna fine strain this in your favorite chilled cocktail coupe. Express an orange zest across the top for the beautiful oils and aroma. Garnish the drink with the zest and the raspberry on a pick and there have it, the 1934 Cosmo. What I love about this cocktail, like in the bar and I was right, is the fact that while it is fruity and citrusy, it is not sweet or juicy. It is very spread forward and dry and I think it is very surprising for this kind of flavor spectrum and I love it. So my friends, this is it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe before you go to turn that bell if you want to make sure not to miss the next one. And until then, thank you very much again. Have a great day and see you very soon. Cheers. Mm, really, that Alaska is something, my friends.